everybody. So again, Murphy, Ava, Ava missed out on her, uh, uh, the last video. That's okay, I suppose. So in the last video, we had generated a parabola, uh, quadratic, that was in this form, or looked like this in standard form, and looked like this in vertex form. And we wanted to talk briefly about domain and range. And it's not too bad. Because our variables have whole number um, or, or nice uh, uh, exponents, there's no variables in the denominator, there's no variables underneath square roots, our domain's going to be all real numbers. And, and that's, that's the double barred R. Now some people will go negative infinity to infinity, forgive me my infinities aren't the best. Um, uh, the range, um, if it opens up, you'll take and you include the y value of the vertex, and then that goes off to infinity. And if it opens down, it's negative infinity to the y value of the vertex. And we close that off because we include that as well. All right. Some other basic uh, information. So if you're in the standard form, you find your x-intercepts by using the quadratic. Uh, that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Drop my a accidentally. And in this instance, so the negative 3 up here comes in as a positive 3. You take the opposite of it. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, and that's my 1 from my a, 1 from my a, 4 from my c. So this becomes 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 16 over 2. Now, this is our discriminant. It's going to be negative, which means we get complex roots. So we end up with 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 7 over 2. Again, complex roots. Now, if you're in, this, uh, in the vertex form, you let your y be 0. And remember, y is the same as your f of x. So we just put 0 is equal to x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 7 fourths. We bring this over. It becomes a negative 7 fourths. We impose the square root on both sides. If I impose the square root, plus or minus occurs. Now, square roots split over um, division. So square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 7 is just the square root of 7, and because of the negative, we pull out an i. I take the square root of a square, and I have x minus 3 over 2. Bring the 3 over 2, I have 3 over 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 7 over 2. This is the same as that. And they should be the same, because these two are the same equation. Now, I've got complex roots, so we don't see them on the real plane. Um, the y-intercept in the standard form is just this value with a 0 in front of it. It's 0c. In our instance, it's 0, 4. If you're on the vertex form, you let your x be 0. And that becomes 9 fourths plus 7 fourths, which is 16 fourths, which is just 4. And that's the same uh, ordered pair as what you had over here. So, a couple of things. X is 3 over 2. That's our axis of symmetry. So I put a dotted line at 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Okay. Our vertex is 3 over 2, 7 over 4. So that's 1 and a half, and then that's 1 and 3 fourths. So I, I did my best to approximate. And I put a dot there, and I just labeled it. I said, oh, there's my vertex. It's that value. And then the y-intercept is 0, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the axis of symmetry is really quite nice. You'll notice that this is one and a half units away, and if I go one and a half units to, to this side, I'll also be up at four. And I wrote up here, due to AOS, axis of symmetry. And then I'm able to sketch my parabola. Okay.